All right, so today I'm gonna to cover the top 10 things that you should look for when buying a snake. And let me tell you, I've sold quite a few snakes here in Colorado, and it's, it's, I'm actually pretty surprised that a lot of people don't ask me a lot of questions when they're buying those snakes. And I think a lot of people don't really know what to ask. As a matter of fact, when I first started in ball pythons, there was a lot of snakes that I should have asked some more questions when I bought them, and if I would have known some of the stuff up front, I probably wouldn't have purchased those snakes. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to cover 10 things you should look for when buying a snake. Alright, so the number one question you should probably ask when you're about to buy a snake is what is that snake eating? And let me tell you, snakes can get stuck on a certain food item and in some cases it can be extremely difficult to even find that specific food. As a matter of fact, I've seen some people where they'll only feed like gerbils or hamsters or something like that. And let me tell you, it'd be extremely difficult to find a reliable source of anything like that. And some people will feed like only a live African soft fur and the funny thing about African soft furs is, as far as I know, they're still on the Lacey Act, which means it's basically illegal to transport that rodent between states here in the United States. So if nobody in your state actually breeds African soft furs, it's almost impossible to find them. You can't transport them into the state, so you can't even get a breeding stock to start with to actually start breeding African soft furs, which makes it extremely difficult. And I would say probably the best is if you're looking for something really really reliable you really want especially with ball pythons you want them on a frozen thawed rat and it's, it's, it's pretty much the, the ultimate universal food source for ball pythons I actually have bought quite a few snakes one of them was stuck on frozen thawed mice it's the only thing that thing will eat I've tried so many different uh, I've tried live rats I've tried frozen thawed rats and every now and then I'll get it to eat a rat or maybe an African soft fur but it's pretty much stuck on frozen thawed mice and let me tell you with a female ball python it's extremely difficult to get that snake up to breeding weight to, with just frozen thawed mice it's really difficult and I have a few other snakes that are live only the only thing they will eat is live rats and let me tell you if you have an aversion to feeding live I would definitely look at what that snake is eating before you buy it all right, so the number two thing you have to take into consideration is if that snake is priced appropriately. And I would say a lot of times you just can't walk up to the guy behind the table at a reptile show and say, hey, is that a good price for the snake? Because it's not really a fair question. I'd say really what you need to do is you need to go over to Morph Market and kind of look at the low end and the high end price for that specific morph or the specific species of snake you're looking for. And then you can kind of get a feel for, you know, kind of what the price range is sometimes you can look at the sold stuff but I'd say in a lot of cases you know the, the prices can change especially if you're looking at a brand new morph kind of like the scaleless head when I first started in ball pythons the scaleless heads were selling for crazy money now you can pick them up really inexpensively because the prices come down this basically people have bred them and increased the supply which decreases the price so you really have to watch especially on new morphs but I'd say pretty much across the board there's a lot of morphs that are pretty stable you know like your clowns or your pies or some of the basic genes and you pretty much know what they should be worth and the more you look into the pricing you can kind of figure out what they should be worth and when you walk up to the table at the shows you go yeah that's a pretty fair price and then in a lot of cases you'll see like a one-of-a-kind snake like Bobby around my, <laughs> my neck here this is I would say this is a one-of-a-kind snake you just can't go to morph market and buy a big huge six-year-old bamboo male that is as big as Bobby is it just really doesn't exist so in that case you pretty much have to pay what they're asking if you want that particular snake all right, so the number three thing that you should really look at before you buy a snake is if that snake is healthy. And a lot of times I would say it really takes kind of a trained eye. You have to be, you almost have to be a snake person to determine if, if a snake is healthy or not. Pretty much the first thing you wanna look for is mites. They're little tiny black spots that go on the snake. If you see little black spots anywhere, especially if you see one crawling around on a snake, you definitely wanna stay away from anything in that whole collection right there on the table. You wanna 
I just say walk away from any mites. You definitely don't want that problem. They're extremely difficult to get rid of. And essentially what it is, it's a little tiny mite that's, that burrows in between the scales of the snake and sucks the blood of the snake. And what it does is after it sucks the blood, it moves to another spot and then another spot. And pretty soon your whole snake is covered in all these little red sores because of the mites. It's pretty awful. I actually had them in my collection once and I struggled for months trying to get rid of them. Let me tell you, that's one of the reasons you quarantine. You definitely don't want mites. And the other thing is respiratory infections. A lot of times you'll see like a little bubbling at the mouth or liquid around the mouth. Or a lot of times you'll actually hear uh, snakes They'll, they'll be like wheezing, you can hear them breathe a little bit, and that is a sure sign of a respiratory infection. You definitely don't want that. So I'd say it's, uh, the, between those two, those are probably the most common. Another one is like kind of a sunken in body, but I'd say in a lot of cases, if a snake is fasting a long time, sometimes the body can get a little bit sunken in. Maybe it'll look a little bit sickly, but in a lot of cases, they can go back on food and recover their body condition really quickly. All right, so number four, you want to know if that snake that you are about to buy has been eating or if it has been fasting. And I would say it's not really a deal breaker. In some cases, it's just really good to know if it's been fasting and how long it has been fasting. As a matter of fact, I sold a pied ball python. It was an adult female, and that thing would just not eat. I tried everything, and it was just a really super picky eater, and it was fasting for a long time. And I just decided, hey, I'm just going to bring it to the show, mark it down, and sell it. It and make sure I inform people, hey, this is a really picky, finicky eater. It's been fasting for a while. I just want to unload it. And some people were just thrilled to death to actually have a, an adult female pied ball python. And I was just kind of tired of having it in my collection because it wouldn't eat. And let me tell you, that is one of the struggles with the ball pythons. I'd say it's probably not a good idea to buy and sell based on if they're fasting or if they're eating because a lot of times they'll switch really quick and in a matter of just a few weeks they can gain an incredible amount of body mass and be ready to breed so I don't know it's kind of a mixed bag you know sometimes I feel like I should have kept that snake but on the flip side I was kind of tired of it fasting for so long but you definitely want to know what you're getting into if it's a really finicky eater if it's been fasting for a long time you definitely want to ask those questions before you buy your snake all right, so number five, you wanna know when that snake has last laid eggs. When was the last time it laid a clutch of eggs? And if you're buying an adult female, hoping to really get a quick return on investment, you definitely wanna ask if it's laid eggs this year or if it had last year off. As a matter of fact, when I first started in ball pythons, you're looking for a really quick return on investment. And what I did is I bought a bunch of females that had never laid eggs. They were three years old, ready to go. And I had a really good year, my very first year. And as a matter of fact, when I go over to Morph Market and I look at adult female ball pythons, what I'm really looking for is a quick return on investment. I'm looking for snakes that have had the last year or two off that have just been sitting in someone's collection. They've just been feeding them. They're ready to go, ready to pair up with my males, and ready to have a quick return on investment. Especially if you are a brand new snake breeder and you want to stay afloat financially, you definitely want to know when the last time that snake laid eggs. All right, so number six is you want to make sure that snake doesn't have any kinks in the spine. And I'd say this is especially difficult with ball pythons because when someone hands you a snake, usually it's coiled up in a ball on your hand and you don't really see it completely stretched out. And what you really need to do is you really need to just kind of handle that snake for like maybe 10 or 20 minutes until it completely stretches out. And then what you do is you look at the spine and see if there's any curves in the spine. Sometimes it's really obvious a little kink in the spine. You definitely don't want to buy a snake, especially if you're a breeder, if it has kinks in the spine. All right, so number seven, I'd say you want to ask if it's a proven breeder. And it's, the funny thing is, is I actually bought some snakes. I thought they were females and come to find out they were actually males. They were actually worth a lot less than I paid for because there was a misidentification of the gender. As a matter of fact, I was at the last reptile show and someone bought a snake from the table next to me and they were trying to pop out the hemipenes and nobody could quite do it and figure it out because it was a female. And they brought the snake over to me and said, hey, can you probe the snake? 
snake and luckily I brought my probe kit. I probed that snake and I probed out to be a female. So you definitely want to know if it's a male or a female or if it's a proven breeder like Bobby here has had so many clutches of eggs from so many females you don't even have to probe the snake anymore. You definitely want to know if it's a proven breeder. All right, so number eight is you wanna ask if that snake is friendly or mean. And this can be kind of a tricky question, especially if you're buying hatchlings or juvenile snakes, because really the, a lot of times they can get a little bit confused, they get a little bit snappy. They haven't really had that much time to be handled. And as a matter of fact, I bought a female clown. The guy that sold it to me said, this is the meanest snake in my entire collection, but it was really just a hatchling ball python. And I just stood there and I held it for like almost, I think I said, I think I I held it for about an hour and a half as soon as I got it and that thing was super tame it's probably one of my tamest snakes and I would say as far as being friendly or mean that really comes into play especially as adults so if you have an adult that has really always been really snappy I have one ball python that every time I open the tub he kind of gives me the evil eye and snaps at me let me tell you that snake will probably never be really friendly you definitely want to know the attitude of your snake before you buy it all right, so number nine is one of the things you wanna make sure you know about before you buy a snake. You wanna know if any of the genes in that particular snake are associated with any genetic defects. So for example, there's a whole bunch of them in ball pythons, like the desert ball python. It's pretty rare to actually see a desert. The desert has infertile females. The spider gene is associated with the head wobble. The caramel albino is associated with kinking. You know, the super black pastel is, it tends to have duck bill you know there's certain things that you have to watch out for with certain genes and I would say a lot of times you can actually buy into those projects but you just have to be aware up front if there's any genetic anomalies associated with those genes so you know you're taking a chance when you buy into that project all right, so number 10 really takes some research, and that is, is this snake that I'm buying the best example of the gene? And you really wanna know that, especially if you are a breeder. As a matter of fact, when I bought Bobby here, he is my bamboo ball python. This was the best example of the bamboo that I could ever find anywhere on Morph Market. And I bought into this project, paid almost double for this snake, because it was such an amazing example of this gene. And let me tell you, it paid off, because essentially what you're doing, is you're reproducing this over and over and over in the hatchlings. So the little bit more money that you can spend up front, it multiplies at the end when you're buying into the best example of the gene. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Big Mo asks, what do you do with your leftover rodents from snakes that won't eat? And that is a very good question. Essentially what we're talking about is if you have frozen thawed rodents that you're feeding, you pull them out of the freezer and you warm them up and you feed them to your snakes that the snakes don't eat, you really can't refreeze those. It's not a good idea after you thaw them out to refreeze and then try again later. So essentially you end up with some waste in some cases. And I would say if you just have a few snakes, it's a little bit more difficult because you really don't have many options options but on a scale like I am with over 100 snakes essentially what I do is I feed just a portion of my collection at a time and if some of those snakes won't eat I move over and try to feed some other snakes and hopefully I will have takers for all of those thawed out rodents and another way I get around it is I actually breed my own rodents I euthanize with CO2 and then if the snakes don't eat those what I can do is I can actually freeze them to use as a frozen thawed later or I can sell them to the pet store but I know some people if they kind of run into the problem where they have lots and lots of rodents that they actually have in excess at the end of their feeding and a lot of guys will buy like alligators crocodiles or something crazy like that to actually use up the extra rodents so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time <laughs>